I'm pleased to be here today as we were here last week and the week before that with uh, other freshman colleagues to talk about the need for health care reform in this Congress. And today what we wanted to focus on was the effect of health care reform on small business. When I'm in Colorado, what we always start with is a conversation about what problem is it we're trying to solve. And when it comes to small business, uh, they are the biggest losers in the current health care system that we have today. And, and by extension, the people that work for small business. Today in my state, small business pays 18% more uh, to cover their employees than large business does. And some people say to me, well, Michael, that's uh, obviously because they have a smaller pool of people. It's harder to sh spread the risk. And uh, that's true. But from a business perspective, that's ridiculous. From a small business perspective, if you're going to spend 18% more on something, you ought to expect to get 18% more productivity out of your company, or, or you ought to at least expect to get 18% better coverage for your employees. And of course, every small business owner in this country knows the reverse is absolutely true. The, the coverage is worse. The deductibles are higher. Uh, and it's just a, an illustration of how challenging the status quo is for small businesses who, after all, employ most of the people in our economy and are going to be responsible for carrying us out of this recession. And you can see on this chart the extraordinary effect this has had on my state. Uh, even before this current recession, we saw a huge drop in the number of people that were getting coverage at work. And, and, and many fewer small businesses, now we're almost at 40%. I guarantee that number is well below 40% today after this recession has occurred. Even fewer smaller businesses are able to offer their employees' coverage, which is heartbreaking for small business owners all over my state and all over the other states that are represented here today. Many of these are family-owned businesses. The, the businesses themselves feel like a family. People feel a responsibility to care for one another, to take responsibility for, among other things, health care, but they're not able to do it anymore, and they're making very tough choices uh, as a result. You can see. And, and, and by the way, one of the choices they're making is to not raise wages. Median family income in Colorado went down by $800 over the last 10 years. In the country, it went down by $300 over the same period of time. While in the case of my state, the cost of health insurance premiums went up by 97%. And small business people say to me that those things are directly related to each other. In other words, people have to make a choice between covering their employees uh, and paying them a living wage. And, and more often than not, they're having to choose to compress wages uh, just because of the skyrocketing costs of health insurance. Health care reform done right is going to make an enormous difference for small businesses and for the people employed by small businesses. It will lower premiums and the cost of health insurance coverage, provide tax credits for small businesses that provide health insurance, that do the right thing, exempt most small businesses from employer responsibility requirements. Subsidize health insurance for employees and small businesses that do not provide health insurance. Increase entrepreneurship, expand the pool of workers available to small businesses, and eliminate job lock. Job lock means having to stay in a job you don't want to stay in just because you're so scared of lo losing your insurance. The estimate is that uh, the administrative costs for small businesses when it comes to health care insurance will drop by over 50%. And most small business people I, I know who are skeptical sometimes of the reform that we're talking about will tell me that this administrative burden is extraordinary for them today. Today, it's a paper and pencil system of trying to root out and sort out uh, the health insurance market for their employees. Tomorrow, what we're going to have is an exchange where people can easily compare prices, compare coverage, and get the best deal for their employees, not to mention the fact that they're going to be able to pool their purchasing power and drive down costs as a result. The estimates are that uh, small business will save billions of dollars uh, over the course of this reform, $432 billion by 2013, $855 billion uh, just nine years from now. And that's money that can be put into wages. In fact, the estimates are that of those savings, what we will see is small business be able to increase wages for their employees by almost $300 billion by the end of this period of time. So, Mr. President, today we're here to talk about why reform is important for small business. We're at a very perilous moment 
in our economy for small business who, who do not have access to the credit they need to help get us uh, where we need to be. They're facing um, uh, incredible credit crunch out there, which is making it hard for them to hire again, which is driving our unemployment rate up. Over the medium and long term, what's critical to the su success of our small businesses is that we reform our health care system. We make it more transparent. We make it more efficient. We make coverage more available uh, to small businesses and to the millions of Americans that are employed uh, by small businesses in their communities. For far too long, you know, Washington pol special interest politics has gotten in the way of fixing this system. And uh, the result has been enormously unfortunate for working families all across the United States of America. When, you, when your median family income is going down by $300 over a decade, and your cost of health insurance is doubling over the same period of time. By the way, in my state, it's gone down by $800. Cost of insurance has gone up by 97%. Cost of higher education has gone up by 50% over the same period. So essentially what we're saying to working families is, you know, you're going to take home less but you're going to have to pay more for these things that are not nice to have. They're things that are critical to being able to move your family ahead, to, to have the kind of stability that's essential for everybody to have a shot at the American dream. And for some reason, we in Washington can't figure out how to, how to make some changes uh, that would help working families and small businesses all across the United States. Well, that moment has come now, uh, and we're here. Uh, we've got the next few weeks to, to figure this out, and I believe we will. Mr. President, I'm enormously optimistic that we can pass a bill uh, in this uh, Senate and in the in Congress that the President can sign that will make a material impact, uh, an improvement to the lives of working families um, and those employed by small businesses all over this country. In fact, um, anything less than that um, uh, should be unacceptable to all of us. And I hope that we can do that in a bipartisan way. I hope that we can have cooperation across the aisle and, and the best ideas from both uh, parties as, as we design it. But to me, the most important thing is to make sure the people who live in my state don't need to endure another decade of double-digit cost increases every single year, don't need to endure another decade where they lose their health insurance just because they lose a job or because they have a pre-existing condition or because, as happened in my state just last week, a baby was born who was deemed to be too heavy to insure. Fortunately, the insurance company did the right thing in the end, but the, the, to, to not have another decade where people are wrestling with, with their insurers to, to get paid so that doctors and people providing health care don't have to spend 30 percent of their overhead or more just trying to get reimbursed uh, for services that they've provided to their, to, to their patients. And uh, I am optimistic in part because of all my wonderful colleagues who are here this morning. I want to thank them for joining me today. And Mr. President, uh, with that, I yield the floor and note the absence of a quorum.